Hello and welcome to a new episode of IB Physics Help video podcast. This time coming to you from the German city of Hamburg. Today's topic is simple harmonic motion. In this first part I'm going to answer some simple questions. What is simple harmonic motion? Why would one be interested in studying such motion? The answers and more in today's podcast. If we look around, we can easily find objects undergoing some sort of periodic motion. Here are a few examples. The pendulum of a clock swinging backwards and forwards. A plastic ruler struck gently while being held over the edge of a desk. The oscillations produced by an insect caught in a spider web. The vertical oscillations of a vehicle traveling on a bumpy road. The vibrations of a large bridge when heavy lorries or buses go across. Tall buildings swaying slowly in a wind. The oscillations of power lines when wind blows past them. The vibrations of the wings of a plane while flying through an air turbulence. The vibrations of a guitar string when plucked. All these oscillations and vibrations share a number of common characteristics and the simplest model used to describe them is called simple harmonic motion. The study of this type of motion has many applications in a number of areas in physics and engineering. Let's see what are the defining characteristics of simple harmonic motion. In general, a body undergoing periodic motion has a stable equilibrium position. Whenever we displace such an object from its equilibrium position, a net force appears and tends to restore its equilibrium. We call such a force a restoring force. If the restoring force has a direction opposite to that of the displacement from the equilibrium position, and if the magnitude of the force is directly proportional to the size of the displacement, we call the motion it produces simple harmonic motion, SHM for short. For a pendulum, the larger the angle, the greater the restoring force. In this particular example, the restoring force is the resultant of weight and tension in the string. On a side note, the pendulum undergoes simple harmonic motion only when the angle the string makes with the vertical line is relatively small, less than 10 degrees. To recap, an object undergoes simple harmonic motion if the size of restoring force is proportional to the size of displacement from equilibrium and restoring force and displacement have opposite directions. One of the simplest harmonic oscillators is an object oscillating on the end of a spring. There are two possible setups. A vertical one, in which a mass is suspended from a spring. A horizontal one, in which a mass able to move freely on a horizontal frictionless surface is attached to a horizontal spring. Here, the oscillator is a glider on an air track. This allows it to move freely backwards and forwards with very little friction. In both setups, the cause of the oscillations is the elastic force. In the vertical setup, the pull of gravity plays a role, but as it is constant for a given mass, it does not fundamentally alter the nature of the motion. More details a little later. A simple investigation can show that when a force pulls the free end of a spring, which has the other end fixed, the extension of the spring is proportional to the magnitude of the force. This is known as Hooke's law. The experimental setup used to investigate this is pretty straightforward. A spring attached to a stand is loaded with increasingly heavier masses and the extension of the spring is measured. Extension refers to the increase in the length of a spring. It can be calculated by subtracting the length of the unstretched spring from the length of the stretched spring. The extension is a displacement vector. It does make a difference whether we stretch a spring or we compress it. The plot of the force that stretches the spring 
in this case the weight, versus the extension produces a graph similar to the one on the screen. The fact that the graph is a straight line that goes through the origin indicates that weight and extension are directly proportional. We can simply write this as force, or weight, equals kx. Obviously, the extension x and the weight have the same direction. In the case of a spring, the constant of proportionality k is called spring constant. Its value can be easily determined from the graph as it represents the gradient of the line. In practical terms, it refers to the stiffness of a spring. The larger the value of k, the stiffer the spring. Of course, at each step of this experiment, the elastic force that occurs in the spring is equal and opposite to the weight. We can write that simply as elastic force equals minus weight equals minus kx. The minus sign indicates that displacement x from the equilibrium position and elastic force have opposite directions. So, elastic force equals minus kx. With this knowledge, let's now return to the vertical oscillator. When a mass m is attached to a spring, the spring extends by a length l. The force that produces this extension is the weight, mg, where m is the mass of the attached object and g is the gravitational pull per kilogram, also known as gravitational field strength. Here on Earth, its value is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. When the object reaches equilibrium, the weight mg is equal to the elastic force. In this case, minus kl. mg equals minus kl. We call this position of the object its equilibrium position. We're going to use x to indicate the displacement of the body from this position. Let's now assume that an external force f pulls on the object and it stretches it by an additional extension x. The total extension is now L plus X, and hence the elastic force is minus K L plus X. The weight of the body is still mg. If force F is now removed, the body starts accelerating upwards due to the two unbalanced forces acting on it. The resultant force, which is the restoring force, can be calculated as elastic force minus weight equals minus K L plus X minus mg. On the other hand, we previously concluded that mg equals minus kl, and therefore the resultant force is minus kl minus kx minus minus kl, which gives us minus kx. So now we can conclude that for this setup, the restoring force is minus kx, which means that the system described here is a harmonic oscillator. It undergoes simple harmonic motion because the restoring force is proportional to the displacement x and the two vectors have opposite directions, indicated here by the minus sign. The next key question is what is the equation of motion?